So the picture on this first slide, it's a picture of elderly women. How old do you think they are? 90, 90, 80s. Oh, they're all more than 100 years old. <laughs> so, <laughs> in the world, there are belts called blue belts, basically high concentration of people who are over centenarian, basically over 100 years old. No. So, one research group really wanted to find out what keeps people live long. You know. Tsurin. I know Bhutanese people have profound aspirations for long life. There's uh, one uh, prefecture in Japan, Okinawa, where you find high concentration of old people, older than 100 years. So this is a group of women. It's a singing, dancing group. They actually released an uh, <coughs> album. <laughs> They're very active. They learn new dance steps and songs and... So what keeps people alive? Hmm? So there is a concept called ikigai in Japan. Have you heard of it? No. OK. So ikigai literally means life to be worthwhile. So the ikigai is basically the middle of what you love doing, what you are good at doing. So you have to know your strength, right? What the world needs. This is where the importance comes in. You have to be also serving the needs of the world, right? So if you can find a convergence point of your passion, mission, profession, and vocation, you have found your ikigai. And automation. People are being replaced by machines and robots. We will soon be losing jobs. So even somebody like me or somebody like you who had education in two, three, five, ten years, what you learned in school is completely irrelevant. So how do you keep up with learning so you can stay relevant and also earn livelihoods? And if you look at all these internal and external factors, I really believe that the Bhutan is at a crossroad. If Bhutan is not able to adjust, learn quickly, and the people themselves are aware of these changes. We might not be able to keep up with the pace, right? We may not be carbon neutral anymore. Bhutan is one of the few carbon neutral or carbon neg negative countries. So this means that also we can't just count on the government to attain all the SDGs. One of these unique features of SDGs is when they were conceived or designed, there was an extensive survey done all over the world where we asked every one of them, what kind of future you want to see? What is your priority for this planet, mother planet? And based on that, came up with these 17 goals. So it's very bottom up. Especially we asked a lot of young people, what matters to you to have a happy, healthy life? So in a sense, it's every one of us's responsibility to attain SDGs. Sometimes we just look at the government and politicians and say, well, they have to do more. But are you doing enough as a citizen of Bhutan, but more importantly, citizen of the world? So as I mentioned, in order to contribute as a business person, private sector, as an impact investor, or intelligent business person, you can contribute. There are 17 goals, so you can contribute in different ways. It can be contributing to gender equality by making the work environment conducive to working mothers, or having total equal pay for men and women. It can be different things. It can be also contributing to having no food waste, sustainable <coughs> development, and contributed to climate change, by having energy efficient operations. It can be any of them. And we have also asked the world global community, which SDG goals will be the top priority for them and how they can contribute to the attainment. And you see, many of them talk about employment creation, climate change, and also good health, right? 
So you can see that people have actually thought about how they can contribute to SDGs through their businesses, through their voluntary work, through their personal commitment. So I also would like you, or I'd like to welcome you, to think about which SDG really matters to you and what can you concretely do? Starting from things like, you know, recycling your plastic bottles or saying no to single-use plastic or maybe taking the public transportation options other than driving your own car. They all contribute because at the end of the day, these are the small actions that add up. So how do you create a sense of purpose and contribute as a citizen of the world in Bhutan? I'm sure you're already thinking about that. And how can you inspire others to be part of the solution and attainment of SDG and GNH? And ultimately, what is your ikigai? I think that what makes you a driven person and makes you truly beautiful. In my case, position, uh, privilege, they came as a byproduct. And I was very lucky, and I'm always very lucky. But I'm always driven by what my ikigai is. So I wish you all the best. I hope you find your ikigai and mentor. And uh, you're very lucky to be in this position. They have all the exposure to uh, distinguished speakers. So I hope you take full advantage of it. And uh, all the best. As the world is advancing, the problem of the problem of exploitations of environment and hence the earth is drastically increasing as we can see by the climate change. Do you think sustainable development is the solution to this problem? Bhutan is a world uh, leader in terms of having uh, <laughs> given birth to an alternative development model or de development paradigm we call it, gross national happiness which gave a lot of importance to balance, balancing environment with development, balancing spirituality with modernization. It's a very well-rounded model. But many of the uh, emerging economies have not paid attention to this very well-rounded paradigm. Um, there are a lot of uh, new ideas coming up, a like donut economy. COVID actually crisis has given the space, the mental and policy space uh, to many of the decision makers to rethink uh, development paradigm. What are some of the contributions uh, UNDP along with other organizations did for the vulnerable women, especially during this pandemic? We have done a lot of work, uh, starting from skilling and upskilling women. We've done a lot of work with Renew on catering <coughs> skills, baking skills. Many women have started home bakery businesses, recycling of waste, the common bus baskets, <coughs> one of the examples I have shown you on the screen. We have also upskilled um, women, uh, domestic workers, house help, to professionalize. Uh, if they are not aware of their rights, labor rights, human rights, they could be also subject to very risky behaviors at home, right? Uh, so in the workplace. So we've done a lot of work with um, uh, Renew and other partners. And we have also worked with the BCCI recently uh, to raise awareness on sexual harassment. I noticed that most NGOs and CSO uh, tend to receive support uh, from UN much easier than other private business. So. Uh, I would like to know if I decide to venture into a social entrepreneurship business, would your organization uh, support me with the financial grants and the technical help? Thank you. And certainly UNDP, as an international organization, receives fundings from our member states, countries that are members to the UN. But we never see ourselves as a financing institution. We're not a donor. Uh, we are entrusted with those resources because the belief is that we can come up with new ideas and we can help people, institutions, and governments do things better and differently. That's our value addition.
Um, so even when we work with NGOs, government institutions, our role is not to make financing available only. Our role is to make sure, is it the best way of doing things? Is that the most efficient, economical, and most impactful way of doing things? What does it mean to empower women in a, in a context where traditional cultural rules <coughs> and norms detect a lack of societal value and rights for women? There's no silver bullet. Every culture, every society, every individual has different aspirations for empowerment. I never actually paid attention when I, until I became um, a woman in leadership position. I often find myself being the only women around the table. It doesn't bother me. But it started bothering me when I see it on television uh, or in the newspapers. In the UN, it's a very equal system. Of course, there are obstacles I see, but the payment, pay scale, men, women, totally equal. There's no discrimination. So hopefully I have answered the questions. And thank you so much for um, really well thought through, profound questions. Uh, it's very clear that you've done a lot of thinking. What a beacon of hope for Bogotan and also young people in the town. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.